to Let's Talk Health. My name is Helen Lam. It is such a pleasure to be part of the CNTV filmmaking team. We produce videos to keep you healthy, safe, and active. Besides filming the footage, we do the editing as well. That means spending hours in front of the computer. As a result, we feel pain and stiffness in our neck and shoulders, upper back and lower back. To alleviate these problems, I called upon Dr. Christina Choi for help. She's a graduate from the Canadian Memorial Chiropractic College. And here's Dr. Choi. Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Christina Choi and I am a chiropractor. Today I will be uh, presenting on core posture, deck desk posture, and exercises to help with this problem. Now, poor posture can affect anyone at any age, whether you're young or you're old. Sitting at a desk every day, for example, at work or for school, even a few hours a day can cause overuse of certain muscles through repetitive motions in your neck, upper back, shoulders, and lower back. As a result, these muscles in your body start to change over time and create muscular imbalances depending on how you sit. Now, how do we measure our posture? So in this picture, you will see for every inch that your head is moved forward, especially when you're sitting at a desk, okay, you may be sitting straight, okay, where you start off as a normal posture, you keep moving forward. Now, every inch that you move forward from its natural position, it is twice as hard for the muscle in your neck, okay, to hold on to the mass of your head itself. Not to say that it's big. Now, because your head is moved forward, the muscles in the back will have to pull and work a lot harder to keep the muscles or your neck and head from falling forward. Hot, hence, muscle imbalances can form. Now, if the poor posture continues over time, this moves to an imbalance from not just the top of your head, but to the neck, as well as to the lower back. Now, what is the recommended sitting posture? Now, recommended sitting posture is sit up straight, okay, head back, shoulders natural position, okay. Now, as you can see in this image, this is an example of how you should sit if you were sitting at a desk or even working at your dining table, okay. Your head would be straight, ideally eye level with your computer. Then you would have your arms on your desk where your arms and your um, elbow is at 90 degrees. Then your back is actually seated in your chair, tucked all the way back, supporting the natural curve of your lower back with your hips also at 90 degrees. Your knees should not be far too bent or extended too long. It should also be at 90 degrees where your thighs are parallel to the floor and your feet is planted flat on the floor. If they are not flat on the floor, what you could do is you could use, you know, stacks of paper to put your prop your feet up a little bit, or you could even use a small shoe box to level your feet. This way it prevents your feet from dangling and pulling muscles in your lower back. Poor posture can actually lead to a lot of other health problems besides MSK issues. MSK is standing for musculoskeletal. Musculoskeletal includes rounded shoulders, okay, because you're moving forward a lot more, neck pain, back pain, muscle fatigue, headaches, body aches, and joint dysfunction. Now, what do we call when we have imbalances in our upper body due to prolonged sitting? The term is called upper cross syndrome. Now, with upper cross syndrome, it's because our body reacts in a cross balance um, manner. So for example, let's just say I'm sitting forward a lot. Let's do it sideways, okay? So let's just say I'm in a good posture. As time goes by, I lean forward, I sit. What happened is I start to round forward. Why is that? It's because I start to get weak in certain areas of the upper body. Now when this happens, a lot of time is this area starts to become weak because it's hard for me to hold my head up anymore. Now, if this area becomes weak, there is a balance from the other part of your body to help counterbalance the weakness. Where is it? 
It's in the back of your neck. Now these muscles, okay, they start to get tight. Why is that? That's because it's working hard to keep your head up as much as possible and from preventing your head from falling forward. So for example, if these muscles in the back are not working, what will happen? Your head will pop forward. So it's working extra hard to help prevent your head from falling forward. Now, when these muscles are tight, okay, we look at the cross angle of the muscles from the neck. It usually goes like this. If my front muscles are weak and my back muscles are tight, that means the chest muscles are tight. Why is that? Computer, every time our hands are pulled forward or every time we do certain things, our chest muscles, our front muscles are the one that help hold the arm in place in the front. This ends up being overworked. Now, if it overworks, it pulls us forward. And if it pulls us forward, it gives us our slumped posture. Now, when our posture is so slumped, that means something on the opposite side is not working well or it's very weak. And those are our mid-back muscles here. If, for example, these muscles are very strong, let's just say right now it's weak, causing me rounded shoulders. If I exercise them and they become strong and tight, what it does is it pulls my shoulder back and keeps my posture straight. So it is a little complicated how upper cross syndrome is described. But as you can see from this image here, this shows where certain muscles are weak and certain muscles are very tight. Now, it's a cross because there's always imbalances, and if there's imbalance, one part of the body will try to correct itself. Does that sound familiar? You can be a posture police and remind your loved ones if you see them with poor posture. In the next episode, Dr. Choi will show us exercises to strengthen and stretch the weak muscles for the upper body. Stay tuned and remember to subscribe to our channel and click the bell to be notified when the next video is uploaded. Thanks for watching.